What's up guys? I am back again. I know another video. Two videos in one day. I'm pushing it. I am overdoing it. And if y'all hear noise in the background, it's just my dogs. They just doing their own thing. Okay, so ignore them, please. But tonight I am getting in the mood for my favorite time of year, which is October. Okay, Halloween time. I don't celebrate Halloween, but I do like the scary movies and all that stuff. So today I'm going to be reacting to some animated horror stories. So it's kind of why it's dark. I was trying to make it dark, but not too dark that y'all can't see me. But I did my best. Okay, so we're going to get into this video. And uh, yeah, ignore them. All right, so we're about to get started. I got my headphones that way you guys don't hear the audio for it itself i guess you could say but yeah this way you can hear me and hear the video at the same time so let's get started it was my best friend's bachelor party we decided to book an airbnb just outside of nashville tennessee the house was massive it was a two-story six-bedroom colonial style house Nice. Before arriving, the host told us that there was actually a seventh bedroom, but that it was off limits. She said something about her personal items being stored there. Upon arriving at the house, the six of us scrambled to claim our bedrooms. Of course, I happened to get stuck with the smallest room. My room had a small twin bed. The space didn't even have a dresser. Mm. To the right of the bed was a tiny door. It seemed to be made for a person about four feet tall. Mm. I tried to open it, but it was locked. I figured it was just a space for storage. My mind went back to the seventh bedroom. I figured the seventh bedroom had to be pretty big, considering it was the owner's. I thought if I could find the room, I would be able to stay there and have way more space. I thought if I left the seventh room as I found it, the owner wouldn't know the difference. I suggested to everyone in the house that we should try and look for the seventh bedroom. No one protested, and we took it as a game to find it. <laughs> After about an hour of searching, we didn't find anything. We thought the host had to be lying, and that there was no seventh bedroom after all. After arriving back at the Airbnb from a night on the town, one of my friends brought up the seventh bedroom again. We all agreed that we had already searched every nook and cranny of the house and that there was no extra bedroom. I thought to myself, the only place we haven't really looked yet was that small door in my bedroom. I told everyone about the small door in my room and everyone was intrigued. I led everyone to my room and showed them the weird four-foot door. <laughs> One of the guys tried pulling on the handle, but it was they locked. Don't listen. The lock seemed really Man, simple and it looked like a coin could unlock it. Sure enough, we tried mm. to unlock it with a quarter and it unlocked. What the heck? The door opened and revealed a passageway. Everyone was in awe. I was too tall to walk through the opening, so I got on my knees and began crawling through the small door. Uh -uh. The corridor in front of me was about eight feet long. The end of the pathway opened up into a room. I thought this has to be the seventh bedroom. So many questions were running through my mind. Why didn't the bedroom connect normally to the rest of the house? Why was there this weird corridor that connected to it? I crawled to the opening of the room and everything was pitch black. I moved my hand along the wall and felt a switch. I flicked the switch and the room illuminated in front of me. I was shocked at what was in front of me. Creepy looking dolls surrounded me. There were dolls on the walls and in every corner of the room. They were 
were all different shapes and sizes. Mm -mm. The weirdest thing was that there was even a doll tucked into a small bed in the center of the room. My friends were in quick pursuit behind me, and they all had the same reaction as they entered the room. Oh my God. For the rest of the weekend, let's just say I slept on the couch. I bet. What the hell? I hate dolls. They creep me I had out. just moved out of my small single bedroom apartment. I signed a lease to move into a larger unit in the same complex, but my lease didn't start for a few days. I had nowhere to stay in the meantime, so I decided to book a nearby Airbnb. The place was a nice two-story house. I was greeted by a husband and wife upon arriving. They seemed like a wonderful couple. They told me that they lived in the downstairs portion of the house with their younger son. They said the second floor was all mine. The second floor was very standard. It had one room and a bathroom across from it. I unloaded my belongings in the room. It was a nice space with a large queen-size bed. The only strange thing were all the pictures. On both nightstands and the dresser, there were pictures of the same kid. He looked to be about 13 years old. I thought this had to be their younger son and that he must live in this room when it wasn't being rented out. I didn't think anything of it. Before going to bed, the wife knocked on my door and said, I'm making breakfast for everyone in the morning. You're welcome to join. I said, that would be wonderful. She said, oh, by the way, if you hear or feel anything weird, don't pay any attention to it. Uh -uh. Nope. Before I could even process what she what? said or respond, she slammed the door shut. I didn't know what to think. Part of me wanted to leave. <laughs> I already paid for the place, so I decided to stay. Uh -huh. Usually, I never had issues falling asleep, but I just couldn't shake what the wife had said to me. Right. I pulled out my iPad and watched Netflix. This was the perfect distraction. Finally, I fell asleep. In my dreamlike state, I felt my bed covers getting pulled off of me. I sat straight up. The covers were pulled completely off of me. They were in a heap at the base of the bed. I was shook. My whole body was shaking in fear. The room also felt extremely cold all of a sudden. I got the courage to get out of bed. I walked to the door and locked it. There was a closet in the corner of the room. The door was shut to it. I vaguely remembered the closet door being wide open before I fell asleep. I made my way closer to the closet. I was anxious to open it to make sure no one was there. I thought maybe the couple's son was playing tricks on me. Mm -mm. When I grabbed the handle, a wave of fear ran through me. I had this feeling that something was in there. Some kind of presence. Scared but curious, I turned the handle. I saw the silhouette of a kid. It was the same kid in the pictures. I blinked, and he disappeared. I didn't know what to think. I went back to bed, but back falling asleep bed. was impossible. Uh -uh. I stayed awake all night, <laughs> thinking about what had occurred. No. The next morning, I went downstairs for breakfast. The husband and wife were sitting at the table already. I looked around, and there was no sign of their son. I asked if their son would be joining us, and they said he'll be out in a couple of minutes. After about five minutes, the husband yelled, Timmy, breakfast is ready. Don't make me come in there. Finally, Timmy came out of his room and joined us for breakfast. Timmy looked no older than eight. He had light blonde hair. My mind went back to the pictures in my room. I realized Timmy couldn't be the kid in the pictures. Now I was curious. I asked the wife, 
Do you happen to have another son? I instantly knew the question hit the wrong nerve. Her demeanor changed and her face turned pale. She didn't respond to me. About 10 seconds went by and she finally said, Yes, I had another son, but he was in an accident and I don't want to talk about it. I wish I had never asked the question in the first place and I felt horrible. The rest of the breakfast was so awkward. No one said a word. Eating? Finally, Timmy broke the awkward <laughs> silence. He asked if I wanted to go play video games with him. I quickly agreed. I was so happy to get out of the awkward atmosphere. While playing with Timmy, I couldn't stop my curiosity. I asked Timmy, how old was your brother when the accident happened? Timmy replied, 13 years old. I then asked where the accident happened. Timmy didn't say anything and he just pointed towards the ceiling. My stomach dropped. Mm. My room was right above us. That sucks. I want to know exactly what happened. I went to Miami for a business trip. I didn't have much money at the time, so I booked the cheapest possible Airbnb. The trip was last minute, so I didn't take much time to look over any details of the place. After arriving in Miami, I went straight to my job site. I worked all day and didn't get to the Airbnb until around 11 p.m. The outside of the place looked pretty creepy. It was a large, black, industrial looking building. I thought this had to be the wrong place until a door cracked open. Mm -mm. An old lady appeared out from the door and asked, Is this John? I answered, Yes, this is John. She said, Follow me, honey. <laughs> she led me inside. I followed her up a pitch black staircase to a large black door. Before opening the door, she said, We have one rule, no speaking at all, under any circumstances. What? We feel it provides a better experience for the guests if there is absolute silence. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> what did I get myself into? Right. What kind of place is this? She opened the door and my jaw dropped. There were ten beds sprawled across the floor about a foot apart. All the beds were occupied besides one in the middle. Uh -oh. I thought this was some sort of bad nightmare. I thought back to when I booked the Airbnb and I remembered it had said open plan apartment. I had no idea this is what it meant. Mm -hmm. Before the old lady could say another word, I left as fast as possible. Yes, definitely some creepy stories. Ugh, that first one, y'all don't listen. She said don't go in her room, like, and y'all went in there, y'all literally broke in her room, like, when I broke, they put a coin in the door, I ain't never heard nothing like that before, but, yeah, they, uh, they don't listen, but... I don't know why she had all those dolls. Like, I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Or to me, I felt like that one that was in the bed might be an actual person because I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It's just crazy. Or maybe she just fascinated with dolls. I don't know, but it was weird. The second one was more of a creepy one. It's like, y'all really rented out a room that y'all child had an accident and passed away from in. Like, I don't think parents would do that. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem like some, someone would do. Especially when he brought it up, she was still very hurt by it. I don't see why she would rent out that room. That didn't make sense. All I know is, if I saw a ghost child in my closet, I would have been gone. Like, he went back to bed. I'm like... Back to bed. There, there is no going back to bed. I'm, I'm leaving. I don't care how much I paid. I can't stay there. I can't. Like, no. Then the last one. I don't even know what that was. Like, were those people even alive? 
were did she poison them? They in the bed passed out. I don't know what that was about. But I have never seen an Airbnb with an open floor plan like that. That's weird, that's different, that's not something I would ever want to do. So if I ever rent one out, I'll make sure it does not say open plan. Okay? Because that is a no-go for me. That's weird and awkward, okay? Very weird. But, yeah, those were three horror stories. You know, like I said, trying to get into the mood of Halloween time. You know, fall. Best time of year. Finally cooling off because it's hot out here. Probably is. But, yeah, that's all for now. I will see y'all next time, okay?